Hi, Richard Norton, just with uh, more thoughts, um, ramblings as I call them, on uh, some of my opinions of the martial arts and the world we're in, sponsored by my dear friend, Master Farabaw, at Team Karate Centers. Um, there was a question that I wanted to address that I, I've had a lot over the years as an instructor about the so-called violence of the martial arts, joint kicks, back chokes that put people to sleep, heel hooks that cause ligament damage, on and on it goes. And it reminded me of a wonderful article that I read in a magazine called The Peaceful Warrior. And the article was t entitled, or titled, It's Better to Be a Warrior in the Garden than a Gardener at War. And it went on to describe, and again I'm paraphrasing, just a master and his student, and the master's in the garden, he's tending his roses and pruning, and it's all very tranquil, all very peaceful. And the students suddenly getting very anxious and stressed and, and just finally felt like he had to confront his master with a question. He said, Master, at one stage you're teaching us to be tranquil and spiritual and to be peace-loving. On the flip side, we're learning all these warlike techniques. He said, I'm, I'm conflicted. And the master replied, yes, in times of peace, it's very easy to be tranquil and you know, meditative and spiritual and everything else, in times of war it becomes a lot more difficult. And the whole meaning of that, that I took from that, was that we as martial artists, sure we're learning, you know, very warlike techniques, but it's not us with our code of honor, with our etiquette, with our, our, our principles governing us as martial artists that are going to take the violence to people. We're not the ones causing problems in nightclubs, hopefully. We're not the ones carjacking or doing home invasions or anything else. But so often we as martial artists are confronted with violence that is brought to our doorstep. And again, it's when the violence is brought to you in your garden that it's better that you have warrior skills, that you become a warrior in the garden with those skills. Not only for your own self-protection and safety, but also that enables you to be what I would call a sheepdog in society rather than just a sheep. With our skills, there are so many situations where our skills become an added benefit. You've seen it at other times with uh, ex-military personnel or whatever, thwarting terrorist attacks or attempted attacks, etc., etc. These skills are often a very, very beneficial thing to society, and I would like to think us as martial artists can also bring that sense of preparedness to a violent situation, and uh, and that's it's you know this is all again aside from the obvious individual benefits being in the dojo, just getting fit, mental and physical attributes. We're talking now again again about warrior skills in the outside world and everything confronting violence. So that's what I took from that. There's a great uh, saying I also like to quote that confidence is a factor of preparation. In this case, the more prepared you are for combat the more prepared you are and confident you are to walk away from that confrontation to dissuade this act of violence or to use you know, verbal dialogue to downplay, etc., etc. So that's the, the, one of the values I see with martial arts and everything because so many people that perpetrate violence really often react out of the fight or flight and just extreme fear. So again, with the confidence of what we do, hopefully we have more control we can be protectors, we can be the sheepdogs in society and basically have some skills that are our absolute benefit to those not fortunate enough to have the skills that we do. I hope that makes sense, but um, again for me it's just a great justification for what we do as martial artists.